Pictures and books have a way of portraying romance to be this perfect, beautiful journey when I know that it's everything except that. <laughs> Jamie McGuire wrote a book called Beautiful Disaster that shows how a romance can go from good to bad to ugly to beautiful. My name's Travis, Travis Maddox. I roll my eyes. I know who you are. You do, huh? Travis said, raising his wounded eyebrow. Don't flatter yourself. It's hard not to notice when 50 people are chanting your name. Travis sat up a bit taller. I get that a lot. I rolled my eyes again, and Travis chuckled. Do you have a twitch? A what? A twitch. Your eyes keep wiggling around. He laughed again when I glared at him. Those are some amazing eyes, though. <laughs> he said, leaning just inches from my face. Her first time going to his apartment. And I like the all-natural thing you have going on. Girls don't come over here like that. I was coerced into coming here. It didn't occur to me to impress you. I said, aggravated that my plan had failed, a little further into their friendship. I don't want to sleep with you, Paige. I like you too much. I clinked my bottle against his. To be the only girl, a guy with no standard, doesn't want to sleep with. <laughs> I said, taking a swig. <laughs> Are you serious? He asked, pulling the bottle from my mouth. When I didn't recant, he leaned toward me. First of all, I have standards. I have never been with an ugly woman. Ever. <laughs> Second of all, I wanted to sleep with you. I thought about throwing you over my couch 50 different ways, but I have it because I just don't see you like that anymore. It's not that I'm not attracted to you. I just think you're better than that. I couldn't hold back the smug smile that crept across my face. You think I'm too good for you? <laughs> he stared at my second insult. I can't think of a single guy I know that's good enough for you. After the first time Travis kissed her. I've been drinking, all right? Your skin was three inches from my face. You're beautiful. And you smell fucking awesome when you sweat. I kissed you. I'm sorry. Get over yourself. His excuse made the corners of my mouth turn out. You think I'm beautiful? <laughs> you cry out with disgust. You're gorgeous and you know it. What are you smiling about? Where the dysfunction begins. Mm -hmm. You slept just fine in the recliner. Why couldn't you sleep with me? You mean next to a guy who still smells like the pair of bar flies he just sent home? I don't know. How selfish of me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You deserve better than me. You think I don't know that? But if there was any woman made for me, it's you. I'll do whatever I have to do, Pidge. Do you hear me? I'll do anything. I know we're fucked up, okay? I'm impulsive, hot-tempered, and you get under my skin like no one else. You act like you hate me one minute, and then you need me the next. I never get anything right, and I don't deserve you. I fucking love you, Abby. I love you more than I've loved anyone or anything ever. When you're around, I don't need booze or money or fighting or the one next dance. All I need is you. You're all I think about. You're all I dream about. You're all I want. It's over. Go home. His eyebrows pulled in. You're my home. At a party. To douchebags, he said, <laughs> gesturing to dad. And the girls that break your heart, he bowed his head to me. His eyes lost focus. And to the absolute fucking horror of losing your best friend because you were stupid enough to fall in love with her. I was trying to allow Abby to move on. You said you're done with me, and I accept that. But I'm a different person since I met you. I've changed for the better. But no matter how hard I try, I can't seem to do right by you. We were friends first, Pigeon. I will always love you. But if I can't make you happy, it doesn't make much sense for me to try to get you back. I can't imagine being with anybody else, but I'll be happy as long as we're friends. You want to be friends? I asked, the word burning in my mouth. I want you to be happy, whatever it takes. Marry me, I said without hesitation. I was surprised at how quickly and easily the words came out of my mouth. His mouth spread into a broad smile. When? I shrugged. We can book a flight tomorrow. It's spring break. I don't have anything going on tomorrow, do you? I'm calling your bluff, he said, watching my reaction closely as he was connected. I need two tickets to Vegas, please. Tomorrow. <laughs> hmm. 
He looked at me, waiting for me to change my mind. Two days, round trip, whatever you have. I want to leave you with a quote from the book that explains the title so much. You two are a disaster. I smiled at the ceiling. Doesn't matter what or why it is. When it's good, Karen, it's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs>